Yeah, absolutely. And you're so accomplished. Already two books. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, no, it's definitely a great book. And I do suggest that you check it out. I'll check out your books, too. You know, you've written books. You're a huge advocate. Um, you have, you know, painted drawings. You play p the violin. Things like that. It's, uh, it gets a lot to balance. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. Welcome to this program. Today we're going to talk about learning STEM or science, technology, engineering, and math from a very early childhood. And today to talk about that, we have a very special guest and she is none other than Ms. Gitanjali Rao. Ms. Gitanjali Rao is an American inventor, author, scientist, and a STEM promoter. She won the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge in 2017 and was recognized on Fulber's 30 Under 30 for her innovations. Ms. Gitanjali Rao was named the Times Top Young Innovator in 2020 for her innovations and innovation workshop she conducts all around the globe. And on December 4th, 2020, she was featured on the cover of the Time magazine and named their first kid of the year. Hi, Ms. Kitanjali Rao. How are you? It's really great to have you here, and it's such an honor. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm also good, and it is such a pleasure for you to come here, and I'm really honored, and I also have your magazine, your Time magazine at home, so it's really fascinating, and it's re I'm really happy that you were able to come here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's super exciting. Such a fantastic opportunity, and I'm so glad to be here talking with you today. Thank you. So, at first, I want to note that I know that one of your greatest achievements is that you were named America's top young scientist after winning Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge in 2017. So tell us about that award and what was your invention and who are the other competitors and what did they build? Yeah, so my invention was a lead detection tool that's faster and more inexpensive than the current tools that are already on the market. Um, and it's based on carbon nanotube sensor technology. So the Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge is for budding young innovators who have an idea but want to keep working on it. And with the help of my mentor, um, Dr. Kathleen Schaefer, she was probably the best thing that had ever happened to me because she taught me to think differently, guided me through alternate paths, and showed me while science is a part of it, while how awareness is equally important. Um, and I think there were other nine equally important inventions from face recognition software to robotic water sensors for yards. But the most important thing that is that I made lifelong friends and we're all still in touch and we continue to motivate and inspire each other. So that was my biggest takeaway from the competition. And while that was such a fantastic opportunity, I got to connect with so many other fantastic people. Thank you. We understood that about the competitors and what you build. So you mentioned the carbon nanotube. How does this carbon nanotube work that you made for your yeah, so carbon nanotubes is basically, the way I developed it is it's specifically treated with chloride ions. Um, and when the water containing lead passes through it, it basically drops the current. So these it forms these lead chloride molecules, which almost acts like speed bumps and increases the amount of resistance to the flow of current and decreases the conductivity. And that conductivity drop is directly correlated to the amount of lead in drinking water. So I guess if we had to put it in an easier way, think of a car going over a whole bunch of speed bumps. The more speed bumps there are, the slower the car is going to go. Similarly, the more lead chloride molecules there are, the slower the current is going to go. Oh, so that's how you created the carbon nanotube. That's how the carbon nanotube works. Okay. Um, I want to know that, I know that you named your device Tethy. So uh, what does that mean and why did you choose that? Yeah, name? so Tethys is a device that's able to detect lead in drinking water faster and more inexpensive. And obviously my brother and I love Greek mythology. So I always have fun naming my inventions. So Tethys is the goddess of fresh water, the Greek goddess of fresh water. Oh, okay, so that's why you named your device Tethy. I understood. You and your brother loved Greek mythology, okay. Yeah, right. exactly. So we know that you were working with a Denver Water Facility to develop a prototype. And how far of the project have you gone? And um, is it finished yet? 
Yeah, so with I did continue. I partnered with Denver Water in order to um, work with my prototype, but I worked in the facility for about a year and a half. And right now, the device is in a place where I've tried different false positives and completed my part of the research as much as I can. Um, so I'm looking to partner with the uni university that can re-verify my research and then determine commercial feasibility as well. I know that you were also awarded the United States Environmental Protection Agency President's Environmental Youth Award in 2019. So did you have to apply for that? I mean, if I want to apply for that, then like, do I have to go through the process too? It's such a long name, I know. I have to memorize how to say it for interviews. Um, but yes, I believe someone sent a note to my school requesting me to apply with the application details, and then I applied. Um, most of what I apply is fairly similar. I would receive a nomination or someone would let us know about it. And while I am honored with these recognitions, the most important thing is that you know, the recognitions are always a side effect. They're a way to amplify my voice to show other people that they can do it too. Um, I know that you are working for the gender pay gap and I am also a child rights activist. That is exactly why I want to know that how do you address this gender pay gap? Yeah, so the gender pay gap, pay gap uh, the gender pay gap is all... As, like as well as everyone knows it's such a big issue so i believe that there's a few ways that we can address this one we should prohibit employers from requesting for previous wages when hiring there could be a uniform state law that will require employers to state the salary up front based on an applicant's skill set rather than what the applicant's salary was in their previous job um secondly i think we need to pro prohibit retaliation against employees who talk about or discuss wages because i feel like that should be a new normal um and apart from that i think that if if employers follow fair employment practice laws, we can slowly eliminate this wage gap as a whole. And I think that from our side, women should negotiate equally. And just because there are other family responsibilities, are we should not we shouldn't be undermined for our skill sets. And yeah, as yeah. students, um, I think would we allow to like think about it this way. Imagine your friend who is in the same grade as you, but is a male, ends up getting an A plus in a class, but you only get a B because of your gender. Would we allow that? No, that seems unfair to us. Grades aren't based, our, grades are based on our performance and our hard work. So the same Not standard should apply to, you know, work, pay, anything in that case. No, yeah, you're totally right. This shouldn't happen at all. I totally agree with you. I know that you have already published a book called The Baby Brother Wonders. So since I'm also an author, you might know that I have already published two books. I want to know the plot about the plots of this book. Yeah, absolutely. And you're so accomplished already two books. Um, but my biggest thing is my first book was honestly just a fun book I created because I moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and I would just observe my brother when he was two. It doesn't have that much of a plot. It's actually written in a poem. And it's just the perspective of the world through my brother's eyes in a little book that I wrote and illustrated and did everything for it. And it ended up getting published, which is super fun. Um, the one book that I'm actually working on right now, well, did work on my second book, which is released in March is called A Young Innovator's Guide to STEM, and that helps us go through the details of innovation journey in the prescribed five-step process, as well as details about competitions and challenges that students would like to know about. I came to know that your art is being displayed in the Nashville International Airport after you have won the International Aviation Art Contest. And you may be happy to know that one piece of my art is also being displayed in, color of, in Colors of Humanity Art Gallery. I actually drew that icebergs were falling off glaciers into the sea and caused the sea level to rise. I actually drew that. So back to the question, um, just like me, I believe that your focus is also on math and science. So my question to you is that just like me, do you face this question frequently that why do you do so many things together? You're painting pictures, you're writing books, you're playing the piano, you're even fencing, and of course, you're studying math and science. So once you come across this question, what is your answer? Yeah, so I think I don't see each as a separate activity. Um, <laughs> It's just a part of learning, and I love to try everything, which makes it so fun. So while we go to different school, we have, you know, different periods, obviously. So, like, 
Do we say I learned math, English, writing, reading, art, craft, recess, music, and world language? No, we just say we go to school. Basically, that's the whole idea. Some we like to pursue further and some we don't. So based on each other's interests, we all pick and choose on what we have to do um, and what we want to do, basically. My parents have always supported me when I say I want to learn something new. And I was, I'm was i still that person. And you name it, I did it. Like, I ice skated. I played soccer. I did the craziest things. Um, but I decided to stick with the things that I really love. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing is think of everything as your own activity, something that you yeah, combine yeah. together and figure out what you do want to stick with. Because, you know, you've written books, you're a huge advocate. Um, you have, you know, painted drawings, you play p the violin, things like that. It's uh, It gets a lot to balance. But if you think of it as just your everyday life and think of what you do really want to pursue, everything will almost fall into place by itself. Okay, so, yeah, thank you so much. Um, my last question to you is that I know you have received the Nicholas Green Distinguished Award and Cole Scholarship, uh, Cole's National Scholarship, for your community service. So since I also work for climate, health, information learning, and development through my own nonprofit organization called Child ND, I would like to know that what community services do you offer? Yeah, so I think my bigger goal is to bring the amount of community of innovators and community of young people who grow up to be kind and responsible citizens. So everything I do is try to do that, whether I play the piano at assisted livings, be part of fundraisers, conduct innovation workshops, or partner with the Children's Kindness Network. Everything is to create that community of young innovators and change makers. Okay, so thank you so much, Ms. Gidangeli. It was really great having you here, and I do not want to waste any more of your time, and thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so dear viewers, I hope you all enjoyed today's program, and please stay tuned for my next one. Thank you, and assalamu alaikum.